All right, we're going to get started because I um, want to make sure that we are respecting everyone's time for those people that were here and um, on time. So um, thank you all for coming. Um, I appreciate you taking the time tonight to learn a little bit more about being a secretary. So uh, hopefully you'll find this valuable information and that you'll be able to learn something tonight. Okay. All right. But now, hon, the, it won't move forward. Just click on it. I did. Sorry, I need my technical help. I did click. Because I think you got to do it over here. Oh, maybe I didn't do it. That's what you Did it move another slide? Okay. And this should be, all right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple sec a couple minutes here and we're going to introduce ourselves to each other. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call on you so that I'm gonna work my grid from left to right. So then we make sure that everyone um, <clears throat> has an opportunity to um, tell us who you are. So here's what we're looking for. And, um, Angie, you're the first one in the upper corner. All right. So um, hi, everyone. My name is Angie. Um, I'm the new chapter advisor for Washington State. Um, so I'm not the secretary. Um, I'm kind of just here just to learn about you know, the different um, roles, um, what AKSI looks like now, um, because it's been years since I was a student. Um, and I guess I'm just hoping to, you know, do a good job and get back into the brotherhood. I'm excited to be here. All right, welcome Angie. And um, so then we'll go to our next secretary is Brenna. I, did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, yeah, okay. I'm Brenna. I'm from the Ada Phi chapter uh, at Eastern Washington. This is my first year being secretary, so I've done a term. Um, and I just hope to keep better uh, minutes this quarter. Okay. Um, Annalee, did I pronounce that correct? It's Annaline. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm Annaline. I'm from the Sigma Psi chapter at Loyola University, New Orleans. Um, we do our elections kind of weird. Um, so I just got elected as secretary and I'm really just hoping to kind of organize and kind of streamline our chapter this semester. We're a very small chapter. Um, so like everybody holds a lot of positions. So I'm hoping to just get us a little bit more organized. Okay, Megan. Hi, um, I'm Megan at I'm from the Capita chapter at the University of Oregon. Um, at here, we call it VP of Internal Affairs. I'm basically the secretary. And I'm just finishing up my term this upcoming week. And then Ishana, who's also here, is taking over. OK, thank you. Uh, Fiona? Hello. Um, I'm secretary for Chi Theta chapter. Uh, at Simon Fraser University, which is in Canada. Um, I've been secretary for a year. And um, yeah, uh, what I want to accomplish is we're also a very small chapter. So I also want to be more organized and like figure out if there's something I can do to encourage more participation. Okay, Lisa Marie. Hi, I'm Lisa Marie. I'm part of the Road Chapter at the University of Washington, and I've been secretary for a quarter now, on to our next quarter. And I hope to just help make online Zoom and school much more organized. It can be hard with a big chapter, so helping with that and note taking and everything. Okay, Nicole. Um, hi, I'm Nicole. I'm from the Phi Omega Chapter at Gonzaga. Um, I just got elected, so this will be my first semester. And one thing that we're hoping to accomplish during my term is that we're working on a Bring Up Rota eboard in order to get more people involved in our chapter because we are one of the larger chapters. Okay. 
Um, and correct me if I say this wrong. Uh, Ashana, Ashana. Ashana. Okay. Hi. Um. So I'm also from the Kappa chapter at University of Oregon, and I'll be taking over from Megan in about a week. Um, I'm hoping to just have literally organized and effective communication throughout the chapter and do my part on that end. Yeah. Katie? Hi, I'm Katie, and I'm from the Gamma Kappa chapter from University of Portland, and I was just recently elected for next school year, so I will serve next year. And I hope to accomplish more communication between um, members and the executive board next year. Okay, Addie? Hi, my name is Addie. I'm also from Gamma Kappa at the University of Portland. I have been secretary since last term, so May of 2020. And what I hope to accomplish during the rest of my term, I guess, is to have a set guidelines, rules, and templates that I can pass over to our next elect so she'll have less of that learning curve that I have to go through. Bria. Uh, my name is Bria. I am from the Omega Beta chapter at Western Washington University. Um, this will be my last quarter as secretary or we call it VP of Internal Affairs. Um, and then the one thing that I hope to accomplish as I'm closing off out of my term would probably just to ensure that I'm getting and updating all my information effectively and making sure that all of my documents are all organized for the whoever is going to be elected next. Okay, Jackie. Hey everyone, I am Jacqueline Hinarte and for AKSI, I am the Fraternity Executive um, Vice President. So thank you all for joining um, Wendy tonight for this. Um, I have been in my role for, oh my goodness, three and a half years now. So thank you all for electing me for the last three and a half years. And one thing I hope to accomplish during my term is, so at the end of this semester towards April, it is our um, celebrating our senior weeks and everything. So my things to accomplish is just uh, alumni involvement or as our seniors graduate and become alumni, um, welcoming them into our alumni status with AK Psy. Okay, Hunter? Hi everybody, my name is Hunter Chan. Um, I'm from the Muro chapter at University of Texas at Dallas. And um, I've just been elected secretary, so it's been a few weeks. And um, I just hope to, you know, really understand the way our chapter operates and, um, you know, hopefully work um, with people to organize the rituals and just make things go smoothly. Okay, Francis? Hey everyone, I'm uh, Francis. I'm the secretary at Omega Gamma chapter at the University of British Columbia. Um, so our secretary is getting elected next week, so we'll see him soon, I guess. But the one thing I'm hoping to accomplish during my term is uh, figuring out alternatives to the yellow rose end of year ceremony. Aaron? Hi, I'm Aaron Rockwood from the Beta Lambda chapter at Washington State University, and I have been, this will be my first year as secretary, and um, my goal this semester is to incentivize engagement, just to have more people involved. Danny. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I'm not a secretary, but I'm here from Oregon State, Theta Chapter. I'm just here to take notes. Yeah. All right. All right, well, welcome everyone. Again, hopefully you will um, get something out of what we're gonna talk about this evening. So here are just a few bullet points of the items that we're going to discuss this evening. Um, you will note that uh, there is, um, we might call it something different than a secretary, VP communications, VP internal affairs, um, different, uh, different titles. But the basics of this role are taking a, taking attendance, um, taking minutes, and making membership changes. Now, on the membership change side, that might be something that you don't necessarily do um, at in your role. But I think it will be a, a great review um, for us to go through that and make sure that we are doing that 
uh, correctly. <clears throat> so here are a list of your direct responsibilities. First of all, let me say thank you very much for stepping into this role. Um, I neglected to introduce myself. I am Wendy Wendroff. I am the Pacific Northwest Regional Director. And the first elected office that I ever held um, as a student member was as the secretary. So it is certainly a position that um, I really wanted um, when I ran for it. And I thought I was, I was pretty good at it. Uh, but technology has made us even better at being at working on the, on the written word. This is a role in, it, as an executive board member that is the most unheralded role that there is. But this is by far one of the most crucial roles on the executive board. It is a role that is the heart of the communication within the chapter. So if you're doing your role well by communicating via minutes, by communicating via whatever other media that you're, you might use with your chapter to communicate with each other, you're the one that is going to be heard. So your communication needs to be clear, it needs to be timely, and um, a lot of ways you are the face of, of your particular chapter. So the things on this particular slide, these direct responsibilities, they come right out of the bylaws. So it might sound a little um, antiquated in what these um, direct responsibilities are, but again, I took it right out of the Constitution and bylaws. So let's break those down into the actual duties. And before we're going to go in depth into the minutes, because that's a big par a portion of what this training is about. Let's talk about a couple of other of the responsibilities within your purview as the secretary, VP internal, VP communications, whatever, whatever that, whatever your title might be. The first is attendance. So I'm going to ask if there'll be some of you that would like to share on how do you take attendance? Do you take a roll call? Do you physically, I'm assuming most of you are on Zoom, so you can probably see faces. Um, do you do that? Do you have someone that helps you depending on how large your chapter is? Just tell us how you keep track of who's attending a meeting. And I'm not gonna call on anybody, I'm just gonna ask people to unmute themselves and to share. Um, you all learn better when it comes from each of you as opposed to me. I was going to say our warden gets a copy of the minutes from Zoom. I think our president sends it to him after we're done with GBM and then he then forwards it to me. And it has like the members timestamps and he marks like whether they were there or not, whether they counted for being there. Well, I know I just have, oh, sorry. What do you no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I just have a list of like the roster and everybody that's on, on LOA is in red. And so I know that they're not going to be there. Um, and I just kind of go through, since it's also on Zoom, it just makes it easier to just pull up the participants and just hit X for everyone. And then I, and when we were in person though, the VP of internal affairs before me needed someone's help um, just off by the way that she was doing it, which was taking attendance outside the door as people were walking in to make sure she didn't miss anyone. Yeah, I do it the exact same way Bria does it. Um, I just pull up an Excel sheet with everyone's name on it, marked in red as the LOA, and then everyone else just go by step by step, um, going off the Zoom participants. Okay, um, does anyone call roll? Okay, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just curious, again, when you guys share with it with each other what your best practices are, that tends to be the way that um, people learn. Um, if it works for one chapter, it might work for another chapter. So if you, is there a certain amount of time that people have to be on Zoom in order to be counted for attendance? 
or is it when you when you so when you <clears throat> I see your head shaking so can somebody tell me how that works well personally it's it's not me that does it it's our warden that takes the attendance like during normal GBMs in person, he would do a like out loud roll call. Um, but now he just, he marks it yes or no, but I think you have to be there for the majority of it. You ever take maybe like five or 10 minutes. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I know there's a little leeway. Yeah, okay. same with, Go I was ahead. just gonna add, like for our chapter, it's from like, an hour or so and then after that they have to let me know before they leave and everything but that's usually okay as long as they let me know beforehand and then is someone helping you to see if people are still there um, for me i just check zoom so i'm constantly just like checking at 6 30 to see who's there and everything but people are usually on for the entire thing if they say that they are going to be on um, okay it's a little different than someone physically getting up out of a out of a room, so <laughs> that's why I was just curious um, from that respect, because um, anybody could, you know, get on Zoom and say, you know, you say you're here and but you're not, they're not participating. So, okay, then um, the next question that I would ask is that um, each chapter should have some type of a written attendance policy. Um, do you guys have such a thing? We do, but it's not my role. We do, we give strikes. And so you, if it's not a um, ritual, it counts as one strike. And if it's a ritual, it counts as two strikes and you get three strikes before you're suspended. We do strikes as well. Um, okay. Ours is similar as well, but we also have like absences. So it's like, you have to give a uh, reason for absence and like how many hours before so that it doesn't count as a strike, otherwise you're striked. Uh, we have like a two unexcused absence rule. And if you are trying to, if you can't make it, you just have to let um, me or whoever will be in my role know that they're the reason why they're not there. Okay, are these policies in writing? Yes and pinned. Okay, because that's important um, so that everybody knows what the policy is. And then it also is important so that you're treating each person exactly the same. Um, so let me just go back to the conversation about a strike. Um, I would encourage you to come up with a different word, a different terminology. Is there someone, so what, well, instead of saying a strike, what else would you say? Who else? You say either excused or unexcused absences. Okay. That's the direction that we want to go. Is um, there are excused or unexcused absences, um, strikes, demerits, um, those types of words. Um, we don't want, well, first of all, constitutionally, we don't use those words. We use the words absence, excused or unexcused absence. So let's try to incorporate the words that we use, that the constitution uses. Um, in addition, granted an unexcused absence is still not necessarily a positive thing, but it's, it's a little bit more positive than a strike. So again, terminology um, is important. So if a member misses two meetings, what's your next, what happens next? They're brought into an exec meeting. Well, for us, if they get three strikes, once they have two two strikes, they're brought into, sorry, sorry, unex, one. It will take time, but you'll change, the words will change, yeah. Yeah, um, like once they have two, it varies on how many you get, like I said, but um, you have to go to an exec meeting and explain why you missed them. And usually we're like, okay, just come to the meetings. It's not usually a big deal and they come after that, but then if they continue not attending, then they're suspended, they're put on suspension. 
for us, if they miss two, they're possibly put up for suspension or they can make up points by doing extra committee work or volunteering um, somehow. But as long as I let, I'm known, I know what they're doing and it's like in accordance with our bylaws and everything, then it usually can make up their points. Yeah, we have a similar system to Lisa Marie, um, but we also have, they can make up their absences. Um, like if they just like accidentally one time, like something came up for an unexcused absence, they can come to an e-board meeting and make that up. Okay, I want to point out what a great idea uh, Bria just brought up is that um, they get the chapter gives them an opportunity to do something else in place of getting an unexcused absence. Um, even before COVID, I think we needed to be more flexible in how we treat our members. Um, so I really I love that idea that if you're if you're gonna if you have to miss a meeting and it's unexcused for whatever reason. You can do so. Give us an example of something that you could maybe do. You could, it could be, you could offer them an opportunity to um, plan a meeting. You could offer them an opportunity to maybe create your social media posts for a week. Um, there are a variety of different things that you could do to help them um, to be able to, to make that up. So constitutionally, well, actually, it's not constitutional. According to the Board of Directors Statement of Policy, a, a member cannot be brought up for suspension until they have missed three, at least three unexcused meetings in a semester, two and a quarter. So until that occurs... There is no conversation of suspension. My recommendation in your attendance policy is especially if you are at two absences, is that someone maybe not necessarily brings it to the group or has to come to the exec board, but maybe you as a secretary or someone else has a conversation with this person. There might be something going on in this person's life um, or school that is creating um, an opportunity for them not to attend and to be and to be able to benefit from membership in Alpha Kappa Psi. So again, I would have said the same thing pre-COVID is that we need to be compassionate in regards to members who are missing meetings. Um, attending a meeting is important and I totally understand that and I 100% agree with it. But there are times where there are other opportunities for members to do things if they can't make meetings. Somebody, I saw someone had their hand up. Oh yeah, that was me. Well, okay. I was just gonna say we suspend, like, um, I was gonna say attendance isn't the only reason that we suspend. Okay, why else would you suspend? Um, like, I'm trying to think, like if people aren't paying dues, they get suspended. Um, I mean, that's, we have a fairly large chapter, I suppose. We, there's 11 people on our executive board. And so that's not, I, I don't personally handle that. So I'm not sure everything that goes under it. Okay. So we'll talk about some of these membership statuses a little bit later. Um, I also don't deal with the membership statuses. That's our VP of admin. Okay. Um, so, um, but we'll, t we'll clarify some of that a little bit more. Um, but on the three absences, so if, if someone does have three unexcused absences, what's your next course of action? Um, typically, um, I will like sit down and talk with them. I haven't really had like a situation like this, but um, I already thought of this prior to also everything going on to Zoom. But like you just want to make sure that you're understanding because some people don't always feel comfortable communicating and they might feel just like overwhelmed before communicating. So typically I'll reach out and ask them like, hey, like I haven't seen you at chapter, just so you know, like you have this many unexcused or you have these many excused, but um, 
I'll offer them the idea of an LOA because with unexcused and excused absences, it can lead to suspension, like if it is a worst case and just like also if they're not communicating. So just kind of opening that door for communication and open communication. Yeah. So the other thing that I wanna bring up in regards to um, attendance is that um, first of all, the suspension is by the chapter, is not by the executive board. So if you are, if someone needs to be brought before for suspension, that is not a decision to be made by the executive committee. That a decision, that is a decision that has to be brought by the chapter, brought before the chapter. Um, there can be instances, just like Bria said, that just because they have three absences doesn't, or unexcused absence, let me make sure I say that, just because they have three unexcused absences doesn't mean that you have to bring them up for suspension or do they have to be suspended. The board of directors statement of policy says that you can be, not that you have to be. So we have some leeway in, in these particular situations. So again, that's where we wanna have a conversation with the chapter, okay? All right, we're gonna talk a bit more about the membership status LOA later, a little bit later on. So some of this will become a little bit clearer. So the other aspect of your duties is communication. And a million different ways to communicate nowadays, right? Um, I think Facebook is probably the oldest way that we would have, that we communicate now electronically. Um, there's email, there's Slack, there's, so, tell me what it is that you guys use to communicate with everyone at one time. I use a uh, remind. I send a remind text to the day of chapter and to remind them of any events coming up. Okay. Great policy. Um, we use Facebook. Sorry. Sorry. We have, we use the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I send it out through chapter spot, like very, like the emails and texts. Okay. We just started using uh, Microsoft Teams in order to send out everything. Okay. Do you get Teams through through school? Uh, yeah, it's through our um, school emails. Okay. We are transitioning uh, from uh, oh. group me to Slack. Sorry. For that I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but yeah, we're transitioning. Um, we used to send all our stuff um, on group me, but now we're sending all like official reminders and news and stuff through Slack. Okay. Um, we use Discord announcements, but we also cross post on Facebook because a lot of alumni and like older, older chapter members still use the Facebook chat. Okay. We use, oh. we use GroupMe. So far, I don't think anyone said the same thing, have they? Uh, so there are a, a lot of different ways to communicate. Um, it, the one might not be as effective for everybody as another one. So you might sometimes think about maybe using two different ones that might be able to um, meet everyone's needs. Just a thought, not a recommendation. I know that even as a management team, a lot of times, you know, is email the best? Is text message the best? Is it, well, email might be better for one person. Facebook post might be better. So just try to know what your membership is and what their needs are. Okay, so now we're gonna go to minutes. So here are six steps to effective minutes. Why do we need minutes? That's a question I get asked all the time. Well, first of all, it's a historical record of your chapter's operations. It allows members who can't attend a meeting for whatever reason to be able to keep current on the chapter operations. And it also allows volunteers like myself to keep current on what your chapter operations are. When are minutes due? Seven minutes, after, seven days after your meeting. It says that right in the constitution. I don't, I, I can't, you know, I don't make it all up. Some of it I do, but that particular thing, I don't, I didn't make up. 
does say that right in the Constitution, per the Secretary's responsibilities, seven days. So how do you distribute your meetings, your, your minutes? That's a question to ask that I'm asking all of you. How do you distribute them? We use like a program that emails everybody the minutes. You just input everybody's emails. It's kind of old, but it works. Okay. Um, I also just email them out, but we do this like fun thing where we put like a question in the minutes, like they're kind of buried, we bold them. Um, and it's like a, a question pertaining something we talked about in chapter that's not actually in the notes. And it also makes people actually kind of go through the minutes and see what the form looks like. Um, and then whoever emails back the question to me individually first um, gets a prize. Uh, but if they reply all, they're automatically disqualified. But that's really funny when they reply all. But um, yeah, that's what we do. Does it encourage them to read the minutes then? Yeah, it definitely does because sometimes like if they do read them and they like see the question, it, when they read like the other minutes that are surrounding the question, they can gather actually like and remember what the answer was. And what type of, don't unmute yourself yet, what type of prize do you give? Um, well, so now I want to make sure I'm like not giving someone something that like they're allergic to. <laughs> so like I'll ask them and be like, oh, like what's your favorite candy or snack? Um, and then I'll just deliver it to them. Um, but back when we were in person, the person before me would just give them like a little fun size piece candy, but. So something simple, something inexpensive. Now, do you also then say at the next meeting who won the prize or who won the contest, whatever you're calling it? Yeah, I, I send an email, like, as soon as the first person emails, like, oh, this person won. Congratulations. Um, but, yeah, that typically everybody will see that when they're, like, racing to go send it in. Okay. I would also encourage you to make that part of your report. Okay. Yeah, that would be a good idea. You know, another way to advertise that. Great practice. Okay, so um, that's a great way to get um, lots of different ways to be able to get the minutes to your members. Are you doing that within seven days? I don't need you to answer. I'm just posing that question because again, that's we need that within seven days. So when you after you communicate, after you send your minutes to your um to your members, then you need to put the minutes in chapter spot. Now you all should have access to chapter spot to be able to upload documents. Um, and if I were handier uh, with using the computer, I would pull this up on the screen. But um, when you go into HQ docs, you'll find a, a, a chart on the left-hand side I want to say it starts at maybe 2017. So a lot of historical records housed in chapter spot. You want to go down to where it says where it's for this academic year, right? 2020 to 2021. And then under there, you're going to see where it says chapter minutes. Now here's the tricky part too. There's a little arrow there that's really hard to see. And if you open up that arrow, it opens two more folders. One is for eboard minutes and one is for chapter minutes. So you want to put them in, um, in the, uh, the particular folders. And again, seven days. As a regional director, that is my primary source of keeping up with your particular chapter's operations. So there, it's very important to me that you have that that they are in there. Um, and I will tell you that on that little folder thing, I kept telling people that there were no minutes in there until someone pointed it out to me. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, see, this is why technology is not always my friend. Um, okay. So what meetings require minutes? Your, your general chapter meeting, your e-board meeting, and here's another surprise for you. Any ritual 
that involves a vote on membership. Okay, so that would include um, mid-court and court of honor. Now, when you're recording minutes for those two rituals, uh, we are not uh, necessarily, because of course, court of honor is a little bit different. I'm not look. We're not looking for um, what each each team did with their court of honor presentation. The important part is the vote of membership, and that you are actually doing a vote of membership. There should be a vote of membership for them to be a pledge, and there should be a vote of membership after court of honor and before initiation. Are we all right with that or? Okay. That one I don't see very much of, the one with the rituals. Okay, so we're gonna stop sharing this one and we're gonna share a different one. So we're gonna actually talk minutes. Um, and I'm gonna actually use one that um, is done really well. So we're gonna talk about a few of the points in regards to this. So those of you um, that are secretaries in the Pacific Northwest region, I already sent to you the template that you use in order to, um, to do minutes. I've got to change my screen here because... Okay, are we back to sharing? Okay. All right, so this is a template that you want to use. This is to use this for all chapter meetings and for all rituals. You don't have to use it for the e-board, but I would encourage you to use the same one um, because you'd be surprised at the number of e-board minutes I see that don't have a chapter name on it or a date. So using this template helps you to ensure that you're getting the correct information. So this one happens to be from Beta Lambda from a couple of years ago. Um, all of the boxes are filled in. This is critical information for me, again, as a regional director reviewing these. The things that I'm gonna look at are what's your current chapter size, and are you getting quorum at your meetings? That's important to me because if you're not getting quorum, then um, a, us as volunteers are, are that that's a concern for us. What what's wrong? What's happening with the attendance? Um, when you uh, the other thing is is these are just numbers in this box. This is not the names of people. Again, I say that because you'd be surprised. At how many chapters <laughs> will tell me the names of all the people. All I want is numbers at this stage of the game, okay? So that particular aspect for me, again, as a regional director and reviewing minutes is very important. This particular section on membership is also very important. How many, how many pledges did you induct? What is your initiation date? And when is your next meeting? I want to know all those things. These boxes are here for a reason. And from my standpoint as your regional director, it's important information for me to have. Here's one reason. So if I read this, this set of minutes, um, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, so we had the initiation on April 14th. Maybe it is May 1st. So I'm going to look to see if new members have been reported because that should have been done at that stage of the game. I'm also going to look to see when this the next chapter meeting is because did I see minutes for that particular meeting or am I missing those minutes? So again, they're important to me. Your treasurer's report. This is also critical information. The budget and actually what you've what you spent. Okay, that information you're going to have to get from your treasurer. This is the same information that your treasurer should be sharing at every time you're having a meeting anyway. Okay, so then we go to the body of the minutes. Approving of the last chapter minutes. You can't approve minutes if you haven't distributed minutes. So you got to make sure that you do that. So here's the other part. President, 
brother Andrew Zhao. Not just president, not just Andrew. Title and full name. Again, we're making a historical record. In another year, maybe even, no one's going to know who Andrew was. So if someone's going to go back and reference these, these minutes, now they're going to, they'll know that Andrew was a president. Okay. So that's what we want to do. Typically, I will tell you that bullet points are not a good way to communicate. This is a really good example of using bullet points. Um, typically with, a, with bullet points, I get one word. So it's not helping me to understand what's going on in the minutes. But again, this is a really good example. And all the way through here, so committee reports, the name of the committee, the name of the person who, who spoke all the way through this conversation. Now, you're like, okay, this is pretty long. And it is, but a lot goes on in a meeting. And I wanna know what goes on in a meeting. Okay. Old business is something that didn't get taken care of at your last meeting. New business is something that's coming up for the very first time at this business. Now, one of the other things, and I think it was your duties it talked about, you don't need to, um, when there's a motion to be made, you don't need to put what all the discussion was. You want to name, tell me what the motion was and if it was seconded or not and by whom. Maybe that there was discussion. I don't, we don't, you don't need to know specifically what the discussion was. And then if it was voted on and did it pass. So see this, now see this particular thing was a little short on that particular aspect of it because there was a motion made and seconded. Nope, I'm wrong. So then they say motion to approve the budget by acclamation made, seconded. But see, I can assume that this passed, but does but does what's printed there actually tell me what was passed, that it passed? Not particularly, right? So creating minutes, good minutes, are like telling a story. Remember, the people who are reading the minutes weren't at your meeting. We have no idea what goes on, what went on. Also, if you have terminology at your school that is just to your school, if I'm reading that, I am not. It took me a really long time to figure out what COB was. Because then my when I went to school was SOB, School of Business. Now it's College of Business. So um, those particular, so like for instance here, it says here, Brother Cassidy, DTC. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Now, in this particular instance, because it's an announcement, it's probably not critical. But in other instances, it, it might be critical to know what that to know what that is. And so for those of you that are from the Pacific Northwest region, I also sent you out a minutes numbering protocol that we would like you to use when you are putting the numbering the um, minutes, as well as that's how you save them. So then just by looking at the title of it, I'm gonna know whether it's an e-board or whether it's a GBM. And I'm also gonna know what the date of that meeting is. Okay, so does anybody have any questions directly related to uh, Preparing minutes. So um, this is kind of a weird question, but in my chapter, I'm actually not considered a member of eboard, so I don't attend eboard meetings. This is something I'm going to schedule a meeting with my president to discuss, um, but I'm not sure how I would handle that. What's your title? Secretary. Constitutionally, it states that you are a member. The secretary is a member of the eboard. Okay. Yeah, um, our chapter has had some organizational issues recent in the past few years that um, we're having to handle this 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 semester. 
Um, so I, I'm scheduling a meeting with my president, but I'm just. Yeah, no, you are a member of the executive board and should okay. be at the board minutes or e-board meeting. You're a voting member of the e-board, just like the president. Oh, okay. Yeah, our chapter. I, I don't even have somebody handing off me off to this position to me. Like we didn't have a secretary at all last semester. Um, and I just got initiated last semester. So it's been a, a an interesting trend. Well, good period. for you. Way to charge in right away. There were only two pledges last semester and we both had took on pretty extensive positions because there's like eight members of our chapter that are uh, willing to hold positions at all. We have several chapters like that within our region too. So trust me, you are not alone. Um, while I'm doing e-board meetings, do you want me to write down like discussion that takes place that's not in the written minutes that they have written down? So if they, if we're talking about something else that isn't written down on their slide, for example, do I write that down too? Yes, as long as it's pertinent to chapter operations. I mean, if someone's having a side conversation or something, um, no, but if it's part of a report of an officer or a committee, then yes. Um, I had a quick question about taking minutes at ceremonies. Um, do you want us to like, just have a document of like all the pledges names and then saying whether or not they were voted in or like how would you want us to format that and what do you want to get yes. yeah and, and what was the last question oh and just like so what else would you need included aside from just saying the voting in the name that's all i want okay. um my this might be helpful for my chapter what we do is we just take the template for the regular minutes and we just put it like don't write down much of anything else except for the meeting time and put it in new business. And then we just do all of the things from there. Great practice. Okay. Um, sorry, can I follow up with that that yeah. question? Do you do we submit the ceremony minutes to the e-board folder or to um, the general meetings folder? Um, I would put them in the general meetings folder because it is a meeting of your membership. Okay, so let me refer to my notes. Yeah, because like Wendy mentioned before, when you're doing the minutes of your ceremony, you're not doing the minutes of the actual ceremony, is the meeting that you're holding right after the ceremony. It's an actual official meeting that starts and ends, and you need to have quorum established. So that's what you're taking minutes of, the actual meeting portion of that, not like what punch walked in during the ritual and like all of that, not that portion, not the ceremony, the meeting part of it. Okay. The more detail, the happier I'm going to be. There is not enough detail. Um, Beta Landa, Washington State has done minutes really well for a really long time. And sometimes theirs are eight or 10 pages. And when I first look at them, I'm like, oh, okay. But I'll tell you, I know what goes on in a positive way. Um, because I'm not looking at, and I'm not reading minutes to find out things that are bad. I'm really looking to find out things that are good. Um, you know, we as regional directors get asked a lot. So tell me something good of, that your chapter is doing. Well, one of the ways that I know that is because I get minutes and I can uh, and I can share that positive information. It's not all about, you know, the number of pledges that you recruit or all of those types of things. It's also about the service projects that you do, the professional meetings that you do. Those are all the types of things that I that I want to see, because those are all things, too, that we can share with other chapters. OK. All right. Okay, so does it say, next slide, contact information, is that where we're at? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. We're seeing your your version, not just the slide. Like we see your notes and everything. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> At the top, Wendy, if where it says display settings, if you click that drop down, you should be able to swap. Like on the very, very top on the left hand side. There, yep. Oh, the second one, the display settings. Oops, I'm getting to, there we go. Swap, this is what I want to do, right? Yep. All right. Oh, technology. So good when it works right. Okay, so let's talk about contact information. Now, again, it might not be your role to keep track of the resume. Does my sharing is pause? Can you see it? Wait, hold on. I can't see any of you. Okay. Can you see anything? Um, I see membership classifications. Okay. Well, we're just gonna stay with that for the short term, all right? I, this is what I wanted to, that's what we're gonna do. All right, we're just gonna stop for right now, okay? Um, all right, so remember, um, let's see, contact information. Well, it might not be necessarily your direct responsibility to keep track of the roster. I wanna go over just a couple of quick things so that if, this is not your responsibility. You can share with the person that is your responsibility. Um, keeping an accurate roster on chapter spot is critical to the financial success of, the, of your chapter. So why is that? Because what's on your roster is what the Heritage Center bills for dues and they bill for insurance. So the more accurate your roster is, the more accurate will be the billing statements that the Heritage Center sends. So if you have changes to make, make them right away. You know, if you have somebody that's going into, that gets suspended, don't wait until the end of the term or the end of the month to do it. Do it right then. Um, roster changes for dues credit can be made until November 1st and March 1st. So what does that mean? So if on November 2nd, you make a roster change that says somebody went to alumni, the chapter is responsible to pay dues for that individual, even though you're not getting any dues from that individual. So it's critical, again, that's where I say it's critical to the financial success of the chapter in order to do that. Um, so you have, so say that you got, you have, 30 members on your roster right now. And that's probably, and you probably got an invoice for that. If you, you have until March 1st to make changes to that roster, and then you do not have to pay dues for those individuals. LOAs do not have to pay dues for the term that they are on LOA. Okay. We're going to try this one more time, see if we get it. Perfect. Ha ha. All right. Now, here we go. I know it's four minutes. What we have to talk about is probably going to take a little bit longer than four minutes. So if you have to go, I understand. No worries. Okay. Um. These are the member classifications that you're going to find in chapter spot. A pledge, a collegiate member, an alumnus, suspended for non-attendance or financial or leave of absence. There is also resigned. You will see that there too. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is the only status that there is. There is no such thing as an active status. There's no such thing as an inactive status. This is what you have to work with, okay? So let's talk a little bit about leave of absence. Leave of absence can be a tricky topic. Um, there are various different types of leave of absence. Um, 
their, so these particular types of leave of absence, military, I wrote this in my notes, internship, work study or study abroad, those are automatic changes. They do not require approval by the executive board. They do not require approval by the chapter. If someone will, is studying abroad, which I know is a bad example to use now during COVID because no one is, right? But when we can study abroad, if someone studies abroad, you make that change. That's just how it works. Now that change for a, an LOA is only for one term. So in a semester, it's going to be fall semester or spring semester. Now, if you're on quarters, one term will be either fall quarter. The second, the other term, which we consider would, can, would be winter and spring quarters. Okay. We have a lot of quarter schools in this region. So again, military, internship, work study, or study abroad, you find out a, a member has that, you change their status. They don't have to write a letter, doesn't take a vote, none of those things. Now there are two other LOAs. One is medical reasons or hardship. Now these two particular ones do require approval by your regional director. So again, those of you that are in the Pacific Northwest region, I sent you um, pre-meeting, uh, the procedure that we use here in our region to handle those types of requests. And that procedure needs to be followed in order for, for, for me to be able to consider that. So what will happen is once after you, you take care of this prop, you follow the process, which for, I'm sorry, those of you that are not in the region, um, the way that uh, we ask that the e-board um, that there's a letter written that the e-board approves it. It needs to show in their minutes that they either have approved it or didn't approve it. If you don't approve it, then I don't see anymore. Uh, and then you you come to uh, to me to ask me for that particular, for the, either the hardship or the medical leave. Now, and then what will happen is I will consult with the, your chapter advisor and your section director, and then the, together we will make a decision whether um, we're going to grant that leave of absence for either medical or hardship. So someone earlier talked about talking to them about a leave of absence. Um, that is really not a choice for a membership classification, unless it's for one of these reasons that we've talked about. Now, hardship and medical reasons change all the time, change for different people. COVID, again, has changed all of those things. But the other thing I'm going to encourage you to do is that if someone needs an LOA for hardship, is that you try to work with them to figure out another way for them to participate in what's going on with the chapter. Okay. The other thing is that once the semester is over, the LOA is over. So if we approve an LOA for uh, fall, once the fall term is over and they need another LOA, they have to apply again. Okay, let me do this. This keeps moving. So that's leave of absence. Suspension are two things. Suspension is a member who is currently in, not in good standing. Some of you might call that inactive. Um, there are two reasons that you can be that a chapter can put you into suspension. One is for non-attendance. The other is for financial. If you have a member who is financially delinquent, it does not require a vote by the chapter. If that member is 60 days past due, that member becomes suspended for financial reasons. When you go into chapter spot, you, you fill out how much they owe. 
you'd be surprised at how many people will come back a year or so later and say, I, I you know, want to be back in good standing. How much do I owe? And you're no longer the secretary or the treasurer is gone. But this way, at least the Heritage Center knows from those records what that is. It'd be the same with the suspended. You have to put in there a, a set of reinstatement um, procedure. So whatever that might be. And again, like with the LOA, I would encourage you to try to find alternatives to suspension. Maybe they plan an event. Um, maybe they're a speaker on a particular topic, something to that effect. And then there's resignation, which resignation means that you're no longer um, recognized as a member of Alpha Kappa Psi. Should that member change their mind and they want to be a member, to become a member again, they have to go through the pledge process all over again. So resignation is it's extremely harsh and it is a last resort as far as a membership status. Um, you cannot put in a, res a resign status. Only the Heritage Center can do that. So the best that you can do is say suspend for non-attendance and then put a note in there that a resignation letter will be coming. And then once that resignation letter is received, then the Heritage Center um, would make that change. We cannot do that. We cannot change to resign. Okay, so I am going to, we had a case study there, but we're running a couple minutes behind. So what I'm gonna do is just open it up to the floor if you have any specific questions, this membership status thing tends to be a uh, uh, slippery slope sometimes. Um, but if you have instances where you know you you uh, need some help or you have some questions, um, now's the time to ask. I have a quick question about the suspension. So you previously said that we are supposed to make sure that we go to all a chapter to see if someone should be suspended. Is that the same with if it's a financial suspension? Okay. No. Um, it only takes a vote by chap by the chapter if you're suspending for non-attendance. Okay. Um, question about leave of absence. So you mentioned internship. So is it anyone that's on internship automatically considered leave of absence, or is it just people who are on in, people who are on internship and want to be on leave of absence? Um, it's going to be more the first. So an internship is typically um, well, it used to be a lot more um, that universities required you to have an internship for a a, a term where you weren't taking classes, kind of like student teaching. Yeah. Um, so if that's the case, then, um, but if they just have a job, you can't call that an internship. Does that make, right. does that help you with that clarification? Yes. Yeah, so that's like co-op where I'm from. Um, yes, but you, you are correct. <laughs> so I have a follow-up question to that. So okay. what if, what if someone is on internship, so like a co-op, um, and that's considered leave of absence, but they still want to like not be leave of absence? Um, our chapter, I'm actually on co-op right now, and I'm still Yeah, active, me too. That's why I'm asking. I think we just do it on a case by case. If they're on internship, they automatically qualify, but they don't necessarily have to go on leave of absence. I would say normally in a co-op or an internship, a lot of times you're not on campus. You, I mean, it, it, sometimes you're not even in the city where you go to school, making it impossible for you to, well, at that time it was face-to-face -face meetings, right? Um, <laughs> but, um, but no, you don't have to, no. An internship right. is, is is typically where you're not on campus, you're maybe working a full-time job, um, and it's part of your curriculum. Um, for us, it's if it makes it so that they can't like attend the meetings. Right. And so then right. you can put them on LOA for internship. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. It can be a slippery slope. Um, the other thing that I should have said before everybody left is about alumni status too, because alumni status is for those that graduate or that leave your university. So if someone's a senior and they say they want alumni status, there is no such thing. Um, as long as you are enrolled in the university, you are a collegiate member. But you can, but again, if you, you know, leave the university for whatever reason, so being an alumnus of Alpha Kappa Psi means you left the chapter in good standing. Doesn't mean you graduated. Doesn't necessarily mean you graduated. Because some people also might, you know, transfer to another school. Bless you, Aaron. Um, and, <laughs> um, and they want to participate at that other school, especially if we have a chapter as a transfer student. That happens quite frequently. Okay, anything else? Thanks for calling out Beta Lambda. <laughs> <laughs> They, they have such, they have a really good system. I'm still really confused about things. So I have to ask the previous person before me, but they have a flash drive I'm getting pretty soon that just has all of the documents that I have to upload everything to. Okay. So thank you very much for attending. Um, those of you again in the Pacific Northwest region know that there is a secretary campaign going on. So, all of you that were, um, oh, here, hold on. Let's see if I can get this. All of you would be eligible for, oh, here we go. There's a camera. See, it's pretty big, eh? These were from New Orleans, so that's why they're painted this color. <laughs> The ones you would be eligible to get are painted navy blue. So are they originally from a chapter in New Orleans? We had convention. Ah, uh, okay. So Mardi Gras colors. I, I, yeah, that's that's where I live. That's why I was curious. Oh yeah, no, we had a convention in New Orleans, and these were the centerpiece. My dad makes these, <laughs> um, so I have a pipeline. Um, but these were the centerpieces in at convention. They have been for the last several conventions now. So, so hopefully that will be a little bit more of a motivation to get minutes on a timely manner. I had at least two chapters who did the whole quarter or the whole term uh, on that uploaded them on December twentieth. which, you know, at least they're there, right? But it's hard. It's a lot for me to read at one time. And if there's something that occurs that I need to question, the cows are already out of the barn. Okay, well, again, thank you very much for participating. Hopefully the information was valuable and you learned something. And if you need anything, it's pnwrd at aksi.org. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks very much for taking your time. Yeah. And well, good luck with the minutes. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.